major rule for solving by square roots is uh, get the squared part isolated. Large school. Get the squared part. Bless you. <laughs> that might be what it is. Square roots. Treehouse. Um, so uh, get the squared part by itself. I isolated. Okay. Uh, and that squared part for the easiest problems is just x squared. And then there's not a plane variable. That's, so we don't have a trinomial that we've got to get equal to zero. If we're going to solve by square roots, we're looking for something that's just got a squared on the x or some stuff with x in it. So let's look at some examples of that. Uh, we'll start with something easy like x squared equals 49. Super easy. Uh, there. Is the squared part by itself? Yeah. The x is the only thing that's squared. Uh, so it's by itself. So that allows me to do this, to take the square root of both sides. Now, what do we remember maybe from Algebra 1 about when we take the square root to solve a problem? What do we have to put in front of it? Because think about what numbers uh, could I plug in for x and get 49, positive 49. I could have positive 7 or negative 7, so I've got to put that plus or minus in the front of it. So then we simplify that square root. The square root of 49 we know is 7, so the answer is plus or minus 7. So how many answers do we have? Two, positive 7 and negative 7. That's two answers. What's the, vari the variable has what exponent on it? Two. That, those go together. As we start building up to a higher degree polynomials, if it's got an x to the third, that means there's probably three answers. Fourth, there's four answers. Fifth, there's five answers, that sort of thing. Squared, there's two answers. Sometimes those answers are the same number. Today, they shouldn't be uh, the exact same number. Let's say uh, we hit like this. X squared minus uh, 21 equals 3. So we're going to... The whole goal today is to try to solve everything by square roots, uh, and then we'll mix it back together like this week. So, is the square part by itself? No. So, what do we need to do to get it there? Add 21 plus 21. X squared is equal to 24. That looks like a familiar number. Uh, now what do we do to get rid of the squared? The square root. Plus or minus on the side with the number. And then we break down the square root of 24. If I do 6 and 4, 2 and 2, 3 and 2, there's a pair of 2's. So that's going to give me x equals plus or minus 2 radical 6. We have two answers, positive 2 radical 6 and negative 2 radical 6. All right. Sol solving by square root is a really easy thing. There's a nice one. 5x squared is equal to 80. Is the square part by itself? Not quite. It's close, really, really close, but not quite. What can I do to get x squared by itself? Divide by 5. That's simple solving equation stuff. Nothing fancy about this at all. 5 goes into 80 16 times. Take the square root. Square root of 16, 4. So plus or minus 4. So we have x squared plus 7 is equal to 19.
What we do? Track seven. Track seven, yeah. Really easy one here. Just track seven. X squared is equal to twelve. And then take square root. Don't forget the plus and minus. And then what's the square root of twelve? What's that break down to be? Two radical three. Because 12, the factor tree for it could be six and two. And three and two, there's a pair of twos and with three left over. If you started with four and three, you'd still end up with the same pair of twos uh, out of that. So, no matter how you begin, as long as it multiplies to be that. Let's, uh, let's do one of these. These look like they're really hard, but they're easy. X plus 4 squared equals 36. Now, I'd say this is one of those that's most commonly missed, even though it's one of the easier problems. In my opinion. So this one looks a little weird, but the idea here, and go back to that principal idea, is, is, is the square part by itself. Yeah, the, what part is the squared part? Yeah, that whole x plus 4, that whole parentheses thing. So if it's by itself, then we can go ahead and take the square root of both sides. And the nice thing here is we've got 36 over there. So 36 has a nice square root. What's its square root? So we have x plus 4 equals plus or minus 6. Well, that means you got x plus 4 is equal to positive 6. And x plus 4 is equal to negative 6. You got two problems to work. So split it up, work them out. Don't, the most com, the, what makes this the most commonly missed problems in this particular uh, subject or part of the subject is a lot of folks will just go, oh, it's x plus 4 is equal to 6, and then they'll subtract 4 and get 2, and then put their plus or minus on it and get plus or minus 2, which is not correct. Because if I move the 4 by subtraction, which is the right way, uh, there's my 2. And if I move this 4, what's negative 6 minus 4? Negative 10. So we, if we weight on the plus or minus, then we are going to miss one of our answers there. So be careful. And I always kind of just make sure I split it up there. Jason? Another way to do this. What do you mean? Is I apply the square to the x and 4 to get... That'd be square. wrong. You got lucky if you got the same answers. I did not get the same Okay. I got <laughs> if you got different answers, that'd definitely be incorrect. Well, yes, These are the only two. Uh, yeah. Don't square this. And if you do square it, it's x squared plus 8x plus 16, not x squared plus 16. That's incorrect for squaring. Because when you square x plus 4, it's x plus 4 times x plus 4, and you have to distribute twice. And there's a middle term that creates a trinomial out of that. So definitely not. Yeah, this is definitely you know, the way you want to go. Let's try this one, x plus 7. There are other ways, JC, to kind of go off of what you said. Yes, there are other ways to solve these. Uh, for, the, for these particular problems, this is the quickest and uh, most streamlined way of getting to the solutions. Out of that. There are other ways to do it. Uh, Usually if somebody says, this is the only way to do that, it's because they don't know another way. But there are plenty of other ways to solve quadratics. Uh, factoring is one of them. Quadratic formula will be the next one we'll talk about. I'm trying to solve by square roots today, so kind of try to go in that direction with everything you do today. All right, what's the first move for this one? Add six, yeah. The squared part is this stuff. So to get it by itself, if we add six, that's going to help. Um, that'll get us x plus seven squared 
is equal to 28. And then, can we take the square root now? Yeah. The square part's by itself, so that allows me to do that. And then I need to break down 28. So somewhere in my brain or in my head, I'm breaking down 28 as 7 and 4 and 2 and 2. So I end up with x plus 7 is equal to 2 radical 7 with a plus or minus in front of it. All right, it's not real good. Okay. Okay. Now, that means I have two problems to work. For exact solutions, which is what we're shooting for here, uh, since we're, we're not dealing with graphing at the moment. For exact solutions, anytime you end up with something with a radical left over, you can just leave it one problem. Over here, we had it, it come back out to a nice number, you know, plus or minus six. That's a number that we can work with. Two radical seven is not a like term to seven because this one has the radical on it. So that, that makes it different. So I can get x by itself here by just taking the 7 and moving it. Take more space. And if I subtract 7, that's going to give me x equals negative 7 plus or minus 2 radical 7. That's what I'm, you know, kind of trying to get. So I have negative 7 plus 2 radical 7, so... It's standard practice to put it in the front. So when you see on Khan Academy, it's probably going to be the, the regular number in the front and the radical in the back. That's that's standard what what we call standard form for for a number like that. So uh, mathematically it doesn't matter, but standard form is usually like that. Good question. All right. Let's look at another one maybe like that. Say we had x minus 2 squared plus 8 equals First step of this condition. Subtract the, the 8 there. Get over here. Eight. That's going to give us x minus 2 squared is equal to what? 48. Okay. And then I can take the square root of both sides. And 48 doesn't have a nice square root. If it's 49, yeah, we're in business. Uh, 48 doesn't, so we're going to break down 48 somewhere. 8 and 6, 4 and 2, 2 and 2, 6 is 2 and 3. So there's one, two pairs of twos, and then a 3 left over. So what's our simplified radical there on 48? Four radical three. Good job. Okay. Now, because it has a radical in it, we're not going to split it apart and do two separate problems. We're just going to move the two. My addition. Two plus or minus four radical three. Now, when we get into graphing a little bit more, we might convert those to decimals just so we can get a better idea of where it is on a graph. But as far as we're concerned today, we're just solving. We really we want exact solutions uh, for that. That's what we're kind of after there. All right. Let's do one more, and then I'll let you work on your Khan Academy stuff today. Uh, get started on it. Uh, let's see.
2 parentheses x plus 3 squared minus 5 is equal to 21. First thing. What part is not tied to the squared part? Yeah, so that, that part right there, since it's not directly attached to it, that's the part we need to move first. So how do we get rid of that minus 5? Yeah, you plus 5. Now, if we divide by 2, that'll leave this parentheses with the squared on it by itself. So if we divide by that 2, that's going to help us. Uh, breaks down the 26 to be 13. And now we can throw the square root to it. 13, does it break down any? Oh, that's nice. X plus 3 equals plus or minus the square root of 13. What can we do to get X by itself? Track 3. What's our final answer? Good job. Two answers there. Negative 3 plus the square root of 13 and negative 3 minus the square root of 13. Yeah. I, if it ends up like this, I think it'll be a multiple choice thing. Either that or it'll have a button that you'll click that says that. Um, all right.